week on Faith Lift. I've come to say to you this afternoon, you have an appointment with God to disappoint your enemies. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands and say, I am appointed. My life will not be stuck. Hallelujah. Come on, say one more time. Say, my life will no longer be stuck. You're going to go from glory to glory, from power to power, from faith to faith, from victory to victory. Amen? Now, write this down. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Let me give you a few benefits of praying in the Holy Ghost. Are you ready? When you're praying in tongues, you're releasing the breath of God. Am I right? Am I correct? All right. The Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, please, it tells us in the book of Isaiah, chapter 30 and verse 34. Let's go there for a second. Isaiah 30 and verse 34. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> book of Isaiah. I'll find it for you in a second. Thank you, Jesus. What did I say? I, well, it's, well I'll, give, I'll give you the right scripture before the service. It says, the breath of the Lord is like brimstone. Okay? See, after me, say, the breath of the Lord is like brimstone. Now, you know when the Bible talks to you about brimstone, it's talking about judgment. Am I correct? Come on, say brimstone equals judgment. Are you listening? Now, listen. So when you're praying in tongues... You're releasing judgment upon your enemies. Can I hear an amen, saints? Now, let me give you five benefits from this, from this book. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. <clears throat> Praying in tongues will overrule and overturn the death sentence and death assignment of the enemy against your life. There was a death sentence hanging over the head of Peter. Are you hearing me, saints? And you know that once, do you remember when uh, Salome was dancing before Herod, right? And she, she said to her, tell me what you want. I'll give you anything up to the half of my kingdom, right? And she went to her mother and said, what should I ask for? She said, tell him to give you on a platter the head of John the Baptist. When he heard that, his countenance fell. But because of his oath, right? Because of his word. Are you listening to me? Even against his own will, he's still done it. Because of his oath. Now, here is Peter in jail, knowing that a death sentence is against his life and has been signed by Herod. And there's no reversing. Are you listening? And the Bible says, when the death sentence was pronounced upon Peter, praying in tongues reversed it. I'm telling you that any death assignment against your life will be reversed by the power of praying in tongues. Say amen, somebody. So tongue will reverse death and demonic assignment against your life. Say amen, saints. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Write this down, please. Tongues <clears throat> is releasing the, fire, the wind of God to blow in your life. The Bible says on the day of Pentecost, 
there came a sound from heaven as what? As of a rushing mighty wind. Everybody say rushing mighty wind. All right. So when you're praying in the Holy Ghost, what are you releasing? The wind of God. Say after me. Say when I pray in tongues, I'm releasing the winds of God. Now, in the Bible, there are four kinds of winds. There is the north wind, the south wind, the east wind, and the west wind. Are you listening to me, saints? Can I hear any man, saints? Don't you remember when Ezekiel was told by God, prophesy to the wind. Speak to the wind. Say amen, saints. Hallelujah. Let me tell you about the east wind. Israel had already left Egypt, but now Pharaoh was behind them. Are you listening to me, saints? And the sea was in front of them. And behind them was Pharaoh and all his chariots. And it was about to go and meet them to destroy them. And the sea was saying, you're going to die right here. We will be a barrier. We will be an obstacle right here. And you will die right here. But the Bible says God caused an east wind to blow and split up the Red Sea. Can I hear an amen, somebody? Whenever the east wind of God blows in your life, every obstacle in your way will be split wide open and you'll get to the other side. Say amen. amen. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God will use the east wind to remove every barrier out of your life. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Anything that has stopped you from moving forward the east wind of the Holy Ghost, as you pray in tongues, will split it wide open. Can I hear an amen, saints? Amen. Say amen. amen. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Then you have what is known as the west wind. The west wind. When there was a plague of locusts. Are you listening? Destroying every crop. Destroying everything. The scripture says God sent the west wind to remove the locusts away. Can I hear any man saints? The west wind is the wind of mercy and grace. Come on, lift up your hands. Say the west wind is the, is the wind of mercy and grace. Oh, I see the west wind of God blowing over your life. I see the mercy of God coming over your life. I see the grace coming of the grace of God coming over your life. Somebody say hallelujah. Now. The south wind. What's the south wind? Even Jesus talked about the south wind. He said in Luke 12, 55, when you see the south wind blow, you say there will be heat and it cometh to pass. Are you, are you hearing me, saints? In the book of Acts 27 and verse 13, Luke tells us this. And when the south wind blows softly, supposing that they had obtained what? Their purpose. Are you getting this? Acts 28 and verse 13 says, And from, then, from thence we fetched a compass and came to Regium. And after one day the south wind blew, and we came the next day to our destination. Oh, I see the south wind blowing in your life. Come on, say the south wind is blowing in my life. What does that mean? That means when the south wind blows into your life, your boat is about to get into its destination. Say amen. amen. Your days of roaming around are over. Amen. Your days of pacing up and down and never achieving anything are over. Amen. Your days of working hard and not having enough to show for it, it is over. Amen. Your days of struggling, it is over. Amen. Shout yes. yes. Come on, lift up your hands and my days of struggling. They are over. My days of sweating, they are over. Your days of going round and round and round in circle, it's over. Hallelujah. I've come to prophesy to somebody tonight that before the year is over, you will enter into your wealthy place. God will take you out of the land of obscurity and bring you into the land of influence. Hallelujah. Your days of darkness and nobody noticing you, it's over. Oh, this is your hour of visibility. Say amen. 
God will take you from the back of the line and put you to the front of the line because you will be the first and not the last. You will be on top and not beneath. You'll be blessed coming in and blessed going out because the south wind of the Holy Ghost is blowing in your life. Say amen, saints. Say amen. amen. Woo, hallelujah. No longer will people be able to look down and look down on you and spit on you. Them days are over. As you pray in the Holy Ghost, the south wind will blow. Say amen, saints. Amen. Then we have the north wind. Oh, somebody shout, the north wind. The Bible says in the book of Songs of Solomon, chapter 4 and verse 16, Awake, O north wind. Awake, O north wind, and come down south. Blow upon my garden, that the spices thereof may flow out. Let my beloved come into his garden and eat his pleasant fruits. The north wind is the wind of vibrant growth and harvest. Can I hear an amen, somebody? May God blow upon your garden. May God blow upon your ministry. May God blow upon your church. May God blow upon your life so that the spices of life may flow out of you. Amen. And that there is a great harvest of fruit. Say amen, somebody. Say this after me. Say the north wind will bring fruit into my life. Say the north wind will bring harvest into my life. Say it again. The north wind will bring a harvest into my life. Oh, your days of barrenness is over. Hallelujah. Amen. Your ministry will no longer be barren. Your church will no longer be barren. Your life will no longer be barren. Shout amen, somebody. Hallelujah. Your church may be 10 people today, but when the north wind blows in your life, there will be multitude that comes into your ministry. Say amen, somebody. The child that they say that you couldn't have, you will bring forth to birth. Say hallelujah. You will bring to birth that baby. You will bring to birth that ministry. You will bring to birth that church. Shout yes. That all happens because you're praying in the Holy Ghost. Say amen, saints. Now. The Blood of Favor by Dr. Glenn Arecchion shows us how salvation is in the blood of Jesus. Then he explains how blessings are within the blood as well. The Blood of Favor is a step-by-step -step process to the victory in your life held in the precious blood of Christ. Discover the sevenfold blessings, keys of protection, and more as outlined by Dr. Arecchion. Get your copy of The Blood of Favor today at bookstores everywhere or by ordering online for $18, including shipping and handling, at glenarecchion.org. When you pray in tongues, what are you doing? Let's, let's open our Bible to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, very quickly. And then we're going to close with back up to Acts 12. Ephesians the sixth chapter. Got it? All right. Verse 13. Got it? Let's all read verse 13 together. But now I, I, I want you to count something. Ephesians 6, verse 13. Got it? All right, read. Wherefore, take unto you what? The whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil days. Now, stop. Whose armor is it? The armor of who? God. All right. Verse 14, stand therefore, having your loins good about with truth. Having on the breastplate of what? Righteousness. So you've got the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness. Right, count now. Say the, say the belt of truth. And the what? The breastplate of what? Righteousness. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. What is that? Three. Taking the shield of faith. Right? Verse 17. The helmet of salvation, right? Now look at this now. Now look at me. Look at me. So you have the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the sword of the spirit, the shield of faith, the belt of truth, right? 
and the shoes of the gospel of peace. How many is that? Six. Six is the number of who? Man. That's six is the number of men. Are you listening? So if six is the number of men, seven is the number of who? God. So if the armor of God, there has to be a seventh weapon. Are you listening? What is the seventh weapon? Praying always with all prayer in the spirit. Well, what was that weapon that Paul would refer to looking at the panoplia, the whole armor of God? Well, you have the helmet, this, the breastplate, the sword, the shield, the belt, the shoes. The one that's missing is the javelin. It's called in the Greek language the pylum. Everybody shout pylum. You spell pylum, P-I-L-U-M. What happens when you have a pylum? The Roman soldier will have a pylum, and they will throw it long distance. And when, you, when they would throw that pylum, it would heal, hit the shield of their enemy. But the pylum was designed in a way that when it hit, it would bang. And that will cause the shield of the enemy to fall down and expose the enemy. When you pray in the Holy Ghost, you're releasing the pylum of God that will strike the enemy and expose the enemy. Say amen. amen. Not only did they use it for long distance, they also use it for short distance. When they will use the pylum for short distance, they will pierce the enemy through to the other side. When you pray in the Holy Ghost, you're going to pierce the kingdom of darkness. Can I hear an amen, somebody? Amen. Say amen. amen. Say amen. amen. Now, I want you to write this down. When you pray in tongues, you are sowing to the Spirit. He that sows to the flesh shall have the flesh reap what? Corruption. But he that sows to the Spirit shall have the Spirit what? Reap everlasting life. Say this after me. Say, when I pray in the Holy Ghost, I'm extracting answers from my spirit man to my mind. Are you getting this? You are, tap, you are pulling treasures out of your spirit. When you don't know what to do, pray in the Holy Ghost. Now, I don't have time to go through all this today. But the word, secrets, in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. It's the Greek word mysterion. And the word mysterion means plans and purposes. So when you're praying in the Holy Ghost, you are praying out the plan of God and the purposes of God for your life. So prayer will cause you to walk out the plan of God. Some people say, well, I don't know what to do in my life. Pray in the Holy Ghost. I don't know where to go. I don't know who I shall get married to. Pray in the Holy Ghost. He will always lead you in the right path. Praying in tongues is spirit-to-spirit -spirit communication. Can I hear any man, somebody? Amen. Praying in the Holy Ghost is what? Spirit-to-spirit -spirit. Spirit communication. Praying in the Holy Ghost is not leaning upon your understanding, but leaning upon the understanding of God. Say amen, somebody. Glory be to God. Somebody say Hallelujah. Praying in the Holy Ghost will release the fire of God in your life. Can I hear any man? Now, let me close with this for today. Thank you. Like I said, just get the book and you'll be blessed. If you don't have enough, just go to the website. Praise God. Oh, look at this. Acts chapter 12. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Say amen, saints. Now, look in your Bible here. Now, say this after me. Say, when I pray in tongues, angels are released. 
Say it again. Angels are released. Praise Jesus. Now, <clears throat> thank you, Lord Jesus. Bless the Lord. That, that scripture I was telling you about is Isaiah 30, verse 33. Not verse 34. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Jesus. Now, look in your Bible here. Say, say this again. Say, when I pray in tongues, angels are released on assignment. Now, look in your Bible here. Verse 21. Chapter 12 and verse 21. Are you ready? Let's all read verse 21 together, please. And upon a what? Upon a what? A set day. Upon a set day. Tell your neighbor this. Say, neighbor, there is a set day for my enemies. Anyone who has been troubling you, anything which has been troubling you, and they think they have gotten away with it, there is a set day. That's why the Bible tells you, arise, O oh Lord. Let God arise. And his enemies be scattered. Glory to God. Come on, tell your neighbor, let God arise. And his enemies be scattered. There is a set day that when your God arise, your enemies will fall. Amen. Upon a set day, arrayed in royal apparel, he sat upon his throne with his royal clothing. Hmm? And he made an oration unto them. And the people gave a shout. And they said, this is the voice of a God and not of a man. Now everybody read verse 23. And what? Immediately, Immediately who? Who? The, the angel of the Lord. That same angel that delivered Peter from jail was not finished in his assignment. He was waiting and bidding for the right moment. He had his sword drawn out, waiting for the right time. Whatever Herod planned for Peter, to bring, him, to bring him out before all the people and make a public shame and disgrace him publicly. The angel of God said, uh-huh, I'm waiting for the right time. While the people pray in the Holy Ghost, a plan was set in motion. Hallelujah. Somebody said, hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. God has a plan to deliver you. But not only will he deliver you, he will disgrace your enemy publicly. Woo! Hallelujah! That means we serve notice upon every witch and every wizard. Are you listening? Anybody waiting for your fall? Anybody looking for your downfall, it will not happen. With your eyes, you will see the reward of the wicked. Woo, hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hey, listen. Immediately, the angel of the Lord smote him. Huh. Because... He gave not glory to God. And he was eaten with what? Hmm. Do you know that worms should have been eating Peter's body? But the worm that was supposed to eat Peter's body were now eating Herod's body. Somebody shout hallelujah. I want to tell you Every worm assigned by the enemy or by witches and wizards 
and by people who hate you to eat you will not eat you. It will bounce off you and go eat that same person. Say amen. amen. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every assignment has been reversed. Every curse has been reversed. Every spell has been reversed. Every plan has been disappointed. When you pray in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Come on, lift up your hands and say, I am appointed to disappoint the devil. Come on, say, tell, tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I have been appointed and I know how to disappoint the devil. Glory to God. Glory to God. You will not die. You will live to declare the wonderful works of God. Come on, lift up your hands and say, I will not die. Listen, this is not the end of you. This is the beginning of you. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Say when I pray in the Holy Ghost, I will reverse the plans of the devil and bring in the plans of God. Shout amen. Shout amen. Say when I pray in the Holy Ghost, I'm speaking mysteries. I'm speaking secrets. I'm prophesying my future. Woo, hallelujah. Hallelujah. They will come against you one way, but they will flee seven ways. A thousand will fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but they shall not come near you. Hallelujah. When you pray in the Holy Ghost, you are speaking what? Secrets. Has the world made you doubt that speaking and praying in tongues is not for today, is not for you? Have you heard that tongues is of the devil? The Power of Praying in Tongues by Dr. Glenn Arecchion will provide a major breakthrough in your life and answers. Discover why praying in tongues is of utmost importance and why it continues to be important for today's Christians. The Power of Praying in Tongues, available now online at glenarecchion.org or by calling 502-523-4407. 502-523-4407. Thank you for watching Faith Lift with Pastor Glenn Arecchion. For more information or to contact us, call 502-523-4407. Come join us at one of our services at 125 North Lakeview Drive, Brooks, Kentucky. Or visit our website for more information, glenarecchion.org.